Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. This episode is actually part two of a two-part micro series within the Webflow Forms Masterclass series. I actually have a playlist on the Webflow Forms Masterclass series, which I'll link to up in the cards. But like I say, this is actually episode two, the first one I did last week. So if you haven't checked out the first episode in this two-part mini-series, then I'll link that once again in the card and in the description. There's some really important information actually at the beginning of that section. So at the very least, please check out that. It kind of goes over what the input type um, element really is and, and kind of what, what it's used for and various things like that. So do watch that intro. Um, and without further ado, here is episode part two of Input Type Attribute. Now the input type file, this is actually a, a component that's available to us in Webflow, but only if you have a certain plan. We can still use input type file with custom code, but just know that the file itself will not be submitted to the Webflow backend. So this is if you're using a custom kind of backend or you need to, you're sending it elsewhere, this will not work or will not show up in the backend. It will, it will work. Um, in terms of that it will not throw an error or anything like that, but you won't see any kind of file submission in the back end. Having said that, it's probably worth taking a look into it. The input elements with type file lets the user choose one or more files from their device storage. The file then can be uploaded to using a form submission or manipulated with JavaScript using the file API. And we're not gonna get into the file API or anything like that this episode, but maybe something we look into for the future. So do let me know if you want to kind of look into these different APIs of the different form groups. Scrolling down to our summary, again, the change in the input is is uh, is the events we listen out for. But what's, what's worth checking out here specifically is the accept, capture, files and multiple um, attributes that it can actually use. So accept actually tells it, and you can see an example of it up here, except actually you can tell it what files it can accept. And if a user was to upload a file that it's not accepted, it will fail the validation. Another benefit to that is when the user clicks choose file, it's only going to show, it's only going to allow me to select PNGs or JPEGs because I've used that accept property. So that's actually really handy if you want to limit or, or prevent a user from uploading files that you do not want them to up, upload. So here's a bit of documentation just lower down in, in the uh, on the page. Scrolling down, I can see a, a, an example here. Um, but you might have to do a bit of research if you do want to limit the, the types of files and if it's a bit more complicated than just a, a JPEG. Capture's a really cool and really interesting one. So Capture actually, it will trigger the user's camera if this is set. So you can have um, a value of user or environment. So taking a look, I've got some all the examples here. If we take a look at the embed and go to our file, then we can do capture user. And we go down to choose file, then I'll open my uh, camera. changing it to environment, then you'll see that it opens up the rear camera. So a real cool way to trigger the camera there with the file capture. Multiple allows you to select multiple files instead of just one, which is pretty straightforward there. So once again, a very straightforward input and very, very powerful, I'm sure you can agree. So type hidden is one thing we've used on our multi-step form. So input type hidden is exactly as you would imagine it to be. Um, it's an input that can hold a value, but it doesn't actually display anything on the page. This could be obviously in our multi-step form example, we are able to pass data through and allow that data to still be submitted in the next stage, but hiding it from the user so they can't, they, they shouldn't easily be able to manipulate it. So input type image, again, input type image is a very, very interesting one. So essentially this takes a source, which is of an image and it will display that image. And essentially this will, this will actually submit the form. It's not abundantly clear that this is something, you know, if you were to upload a picture of a wombat or something, that that is going to submit the form, but it does. And you can see that in the description here. The other element to this is that there are a bunch of 
attributes that you can apply to this that actually override everything that you put in the form attributes so this is the post well you can see here this is the action this is the inc type the method and whether it validates or not so this is really powerful but also quite sort of dangerous and can be very very confusing especially when you're trying to reason about sort of the website the code and what what it's doing and how it's working but just so you know that if you were to use an input type image that submits the form and you can obviously override where the form submits to the actual types that it can um, expect um, and the method and various things like that you can kind of go through here and take a look at the, the result or the impact of adding different types of attributes can do. So very interesting, very, very powerful, but also would probably recommend against it, to be honest. Range is a great one, which I think you would really like. Again, input type of range. Input type elements of type range lets the user specify a numeric value in which must be no less than a given value and no more than another given value okay so the default if you don't set a min or a max is zero to a hundred so you can use this without providing any attributes as you can see here but there are some more really interesting things you can do with this element so the step attribute on this one actually means that you can you can't you 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 might want the user just to select steps of say two so zero two four six eight so that can be quite useful now the really powerful thing on uh, this particular attribute is the list. So we took a look at data lists in the previous episode and you can do the same here with this element but it responds slightly differently, it actually changes the UI. So here's an example of adding a data list and you simply put the list and then the ID of the data list that you want to use so these match up and you can select different values um, that, that actually form as ticks above the range slider. Okay so that, that this is how it renders here. And then you can go one step further and actually set labels on that range slider. Now, I'm in Safari right now, actually. So apologies if I said earlier I was in Edge. Um, so I'm in Safari right now. So you can, you can see Safari is not actually rendering it. So jumping into Edge, Edge also doesn't render it. But it's interesting to see that what you can do. Obviously, they both render the ticks, but they render it slightly differently. And then the other, other final thing to take note of it is actually changing the orientation. And the documentation here recommends or suggests different ways you can do it that work in uh, different browsers. My personal recommendation is to actually transform it using the rotate 90 degrees because you can have varying degrees of luck here you can set the width the height greater than the width and that that will actually try and uh, render it out but you can see here in in safari that it's not it's not um, respecting that but actually rendering it here i think most browser most browsers will work when you just rotate it using the transform property so input type range very very powerful very very interesting you can actually select the different values of cowbell there so working our way down we get to input type reset now i actually think this is a very underutilized input type what input type does is essentially is it resets all the values of all of the input types in your or all of the inputs in your form. So that we can just see there's one uh, input here. But if there was multiple, it just resets them to their default value. This can be a really intuitive user interface element to help users just quickly erase the, the, what they've inputted into a form. But beware, it does, it does reset the whole form. So we might use something like this on our multi-step form where that we, each form on each page is actually just made up of a few um, inputs. Not really much more to it other than that it's a really underutilized input type. Input type search. Now this this is once again just an input uh, text field essentially but we're letting the browser know that this is used for site search or various things like that right now there's not really a lot going on in terms of user interface like difference in user interface but there may be down the line you know browsers might choose to implement a magnifying glass or something like that a different slightly different user interface for uh, type search Similarly, we have input type URL, which accepts an input type URL. And of course, we get the benefit of the, the form validation kicking in if a user doesn't insert a type uh, of, of type URL. You can see here that in the example, they're enforcing HTTPS URLs, which is quite handy and, and a useful tip. And scrolling on through again, nothing, nothing crazy going on in terms of what, it's, what you're able to do with it. 
So there you go, a whistle stop tour of input type. You can see it's a very powerful element. You can do many, many different things to it. And the great, great thing about it is that it gracefully degrades down to an input type if a browser doesn't support it. I hope this wasn't too boring just kind of going through the documentation but I do think it's important that on this channel I actually teach you how to solve your problems yourself I don't want to give you you know clonables or copy paste things because in my opinion that's not learning so just dipping into the documentation on this particular episode might have been more appropriate than actually typing out the code and just going through the code so that'll do it for this episode if you enjoyed it then please show your support by hitting the like button down below if you want to stay up to date with the Webflow Forms Masterclass series then please make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you are notified when I release the next episode. I'll be in the comment section below so if you have any thoughts, questions or suggestions then please let me know. I'm always happy to respond to you guys and until next time happy no coding.